Um, Justine Rogers brought back some of the moments of um, pupilage, and it was indeed um, very stressful. It's the only time in my life I've ever developed eczema. <laughs> um, but uh, are we human? Well, I mean, I, I, I hope we are. Um, <laughs> you reach immediately for cutters, do we not bleed? Rather inappropriately, because that was actually Shylock, the disappointed litigant and uh, the successful advocate Portia um, at the end of the famous trial scene, um, went off and had a great party with her client who she got off on an unexpected technicality. Um, but we, we do bleed. Um, I got a, it's inevitable because the work takes you immediately into contact with people in um, extreme situations um, as far as they're concerned and people can magnify up to what they think is extreme even whether their neighbour has moved their fence post by a few inches but I mean, really serious things involving liberty and livelihood and home and family and possessions and health this is the daily fare of the courts all the time. And when people find themselves having these matters considered by the courts, they are uh, in trouble and uh, the stakes are high and they are often uh, very unhappy. And it's a great privilege to be engaged to apply your strength and uh, effort and skill to protecting uh, them from whatever disaster may be about to happen. And you can't um, do that um, without a fairly steady hand. I mean, it's not as bad as being a heart surgeon. We don't actually have people dying under our knives kind of from time to time or ever. Uh, and so we don't actually have to, like those guys, um, be able to perform the next operation maybe the same day, uh, and certainly the following morning, and sleep at night um, with that. But we do have to have uh, some uh, detachment and, and, and we develop a, a certain uh, carapace. My first pupil master was a town and country planning specialist, but he'd learned his craft <coughs> in the criminal courts and he said that um, it was a great relief uh, not to be doing crime anymore because planning, um, well in the end it was really only about money, nobody was actually going to be going to jail for a long time having their family split asunder as a result of uh, anything that he did either successfully or unsuccessfully. Um, and so he was committed to a, an existence of um, amazing professionalism whereby he could manage to apply his mind and concentrate and stay awake through days in town halls arguing fine detailed statistical evidence about whether uh, the impact on town centre shops and the local village shops um, would be uh, too much um, if some supermarket was allowed to um, plonk itself on the ring road. Um, I once sat in Maidstone Town Hall for six weeks, exactly that, found it extremely difficult to stay awake. Even the, <laughs> even the inspector seemed to have his eyes shut <laughs> occasionally. Um, but you could see where he was coming from when um, a few months later my career as a planning barrister obviously not got off the ground. Um, I found myself in Greenwich Magistrates Court uh, in the cells and the client was a very distressed young man, just the sort of guy that, uh, that Justine was describing her pupils who she was observing coming across. Um, uh, very um, unhappy, very disturbed. I think his brains were not um, uh, mental health was not uh, enhanced by um, the fact that he, he, he got through an awful lot of glue, which was before crack cocaine, really, in the streets of South London. 
Um, and he hadn't actually done anything that particularly deserved him uh, being in custody for any length of time, but he couldn't sort of get out because there was no one to look after him and nowhere for him to go. And uh, nobody seemed to be making any effort to do anything about it. Well, I got completely on board with his predicament and, and, uh, and felt upset about it too. And obviously um, failed to um, wear the mask with sufficient practice skill, being a beginner. And the, uh, let my feelings show to the, the custody sergeant, who I regarded as, as obviously the heartless jailer. And he was an enormous policeman and um, seemed as old as God. I mean, he must have been in his 50s and <laughs> graying hair, probably. Um, and he looked at me and put me in my place very, very gently and kindly and said, they've all got mothers, sir. And I took that away with me because, of course, they have. And so, indeed, have the jailers, and so have the judges, even Judge Jeffries over there, just one first one past the door, um, and so of course to read. And yet the system, living as we do under the rule of law, um, has to be operated, and each person has to play their part, and each person has to, like that uh, custody sergeant, understand and yet at the same time uh, realise what their role in it is. And uh, that helps. Um, and it's, it is the, the question that all barristers get asked, the second you're a pupil barrister or even studying for it, you start getting asked it and you continue to get asked it all the time, is how can you possibly defend somebody who you know is guilty? And, um, of course, the correct answer, which you had ornate and magnificent variants from Henry Broom um, and, uh, and, and Erskine, and there's another famous one of it from Dr. Johnson, it's actually fundamental to the liberties of England, but uh, the, the, the correct answer is that you don't know he's guilty unless he tells you, in which case they're your instructions, and you you can only do so much for him within the scope of your instructions, but you cannot put your judgment in the way, and everybody is entitled to be heard and have their fair hearing, and the advocate has his job, get the fair hearing uh, for your client, and the other advocate will get the fair hearing for their client or the prosecution or whoever it is, and it's somebody else's job, a third person, who actually gets to decide it, the judge or the jury, and this is quite straightforward and quite easily understood, and that is the correct answer. Of course, the real human answer is, requires a slightly different question of what about depending on someone you think is guilty, because of course, you always have your own private opinion. Um, and in fact, the answer to that is no problem at all. Um, depending on somebody who probably did it is fine, because if you get them off, then that's a great result, and well done you. <laughs> the prosecution didn't manage to get it home, you played within the rules, that's absolutely um, fair play. Um, and uh, of course, if you don't get them off, uh, well, you really don't feel bad about it at all. Uh, the real pressure is defending somebody you think is innocent. That really is... Um, squeaky bum time, that's, that's, uh, and they're the ones you remember, um, the ones that you know, years and decades afterwards, are the ones that, 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 that you didn't get off and you really don't think they actually did anything wrong in the first place, and you feel really bad about it. And um, that uh, is the part where you need to develop a, 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 a carapace of your own uh, inward feelings, because um, a detachment, um, because you can end up losing sleep, you've got to go and do it again tomorrow, um, in another case, in another court, and like the surgeon, you know, you need a steady hand, even if uh, last time out, the chap died on, uh, uh, under the knife. And that is something which um, is helped by the, the rule 
the, the correct answer to the question, the detachment, um, and the position that you're in. Um, it's also, uh, I mean, the terrible things happen if you, if you, if you don't get it right. There's a, um, well, we've had a historic case there, or another historic case, um, a barrister named Kennedy got involved in uh, the, in the, um, oh, I, no, no, I won't tell you about Kennedy. Pity. <laughs> uh, great story. Um, it's the Swinton litigation, if anybody ever wants, and his book's in the library. Um, died of a broken heart. Uh, there have been changes. Uh, 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 a lot, um, it's been mentioned, um, it's said to be to do with the sort of uh, privilege or status. Uh, there have been practices over, when I started, you couldn't have conferences outside chambers, people had to come to you. You couldn't be instructed except through a solicitor. You, were, uh, you couldn't possibly be paid on any basis other than it was win or lose, completely neutral. This was all actually very helpful to the detachment that enables you to do the job correctly. Uh, these things have been changed with market forces. We now have direct access to the clients. You get them in your face much more. It's very difficult to give them the better service that you give by being uh, separated and detached. Um, maybe it's because there aren't any barristers in the government anymore, or maybe there are other good public reasons why these changes have happened. Um, but uh, it's not just special pleading. Uh, it's not just because it's more comfortable for us. Uh, that detachment is actually um, necessary because otherwise 